So this is the, the suit that you saw in the other videos. Got some radiant barrier stuck on the sleeve still from the last round of testing. But you can get up on camera. You should be able to see the desert tricolor pattern through it. And I had mentioned in comments that it was not fully attached to the jacket. This is what I mean. And that's the hand sewn matrix of yarns and then the ghillie material attached to it in a free hang so that it couldn't snag up and pull accidentally on stuff. This is a standard BDU jacket. I fringed out the collar just to make it blend better. This is BDU jacket material with the handmade fringe. Now you can see where I had stopped the netting attachment that high up on the sleeve. <clears throat> so I could bomb this down, have free range, be able to use electronics, whatever. And then I have drape over. And that was how I designed that. The material, let me get up on camera here. You can see some mixtures of straws, different twines, yarns, burlap cut in different shapes, all feathered edges, different grasses tied in. It's not a heavy mix. You can see there's the, uh, the jacket underneath there. That's all the material there is. It's not a super heavy, dense run. That's the unprotected sleeve after as long as I've been wearing it. So for some comparison here, pull that up. Let's see if I can tuck this into my shirt. of netting side by side. Net? Again, ghillie parachute plus netting. I'm trying to give them both the chance to heat up to equal levels here. But the camo netting and parachute material seems to be doing a really effective job. And like I said, it is much lighter weight and it's not going to be as prone to heating up on the person. Very interesting. So now the curious in me makes me wonder if I stuff some of this parachute netting underneath the ghillie layer but over the BDU, if that would make it even more effective. Create a base screen. Probably at a minute here. This is the parachute and mesh material and ghillie. They look pretty darn close, but I think the parachute material and netting is faring better on thermal. It's close though. I think this would be an easier hide out in the field. Very interesting. All right, cut it back to single layer of netting. Oh, that makes a dramatic difference. So that double layer definitely makes an impact. 
and then do a single layer on the parachute material. Single layer parachute material and single layer netting. Yeah. So it looks like to be effective it needs two layers of the parachute material and two layers of the netting to be more effective than the ghillie. But again, this is super lightweight material, very breathable. You're not going to get hot in this at all. No. Thinking a hot glue gun and some sewing. Do a double layer of this over that. Visually, I think it would work. You know, for white light, night vision. I think the material is unique enough in camouflaging. So, well, it warrants further investigation, that's for sure. Alright. So, there you go. There's the, the comparisons side by side there. So now, as I showed a moment ago, the jacket is not attached on the back, so I'm going to shove this parachute netting up in there. As high as I can, which is all the way to the collar. Spread it out to the sides. Let's see if I can pick this up and get... like it's there. Now that parachute material is underneath the ghillie but over the BDU. Now it's not at the arm. You can see the heat up in the arm. Oh wow, you can actually see the line right there. still definitely see that line from the shoulder down where the material is stuck though. Alright. Well that's good enough for a demo. <laughs> I look like Tyler Durden on thermal. Well I look like him in real life. There we go. That's a close up. The hat, just a standard boonie hat. Tricolor. And again, you can see the hand sewn marks where I attach the netting to it. Flip it back, and you can see move some of the strings, straws, and jute and burlap aside. You can see the original hat in there. And I just sewed on some yarn and attached everything to it. That's all it is. Very simple. Very cheap. Just gotta have some patience. Alright. Well, just because I've got it sitting right here. This is a radiant barrier. notice right away this does not have that insanely loud crinkle sound of the mylar space blankets major 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 benefit you gotta rely on something that's like this material go for this material 
The space blankets are cheaper, yeah, but they're super loud. The second you move, and it doesn't matter how stealthy you are, your position is gone. Um, you can see it's it's just as effective, works just the same as the space blankets. Um, it has less of that flowy broken mirror look on thermal, and you can see for yourself the difference. Um, it still has that too cold appearance, so it's best to use it in conjunction with something else. Like the netting. I think the best if you're going to go with this material. Throw that parachute over the top. Let's see how this looks. Now, as I've shown before, the space blankets heat up and do transfer heat up to the cover material. And you can actually even see that on radiant barrier here. Whereas you could not see the heat on the material itself, just like the space blanket. Um, it is transferring heat through and it is heating up the exterior fabrics. So don't let the space blankets and stuff trick you into thinking that you can just you know throw it underneath something that's not going to work it's going to transfer heat through it's going to look better obviously you're side by side but it's still going to be there yeah. parachute material radiant barrier and netting that's probably going to be a pretty decent win. And the loudest thing here is actually the netting, not the radiant barrier, which is a big difference from the space blanket. There's your latest round of materials testing.